you prioritize and earn more money. You, know, you thought of the value of life and not value of money. And I know all of us need money, and I think I learned enough, and I keep learning also from my other people. And I follow Swami Vivekananda who says, they alone live to live for others. And this is my parent, my father, he will be coming shortly. My father, he's a 86 year old eye doctor, and he's working with me, and he's also running an alternative institute where after plus two, we have a four year degree course affiliated with the Technical Taiwan University. And my mother, and that's me as a kid, and this is my brother. Yeah. And I somehow uh, found out that uh, for my first time that I started wearing tracks, and I was the uh, only one wearing all through. My father said he suffered because he was an introvert and was determined that I would not have such a handicap. And I think I thanked him for that. And I was a crying child, and from a very young age, my father forced me to play a few Like even when my brother was missing, I used to try play a carrom board and I, I used to try and I think that I learned a lot of pipi because he was a sportsman and he was a sportsman par excellence, he was a tennis champion of his state. He motivated me to participate on all the other programs because he wanted me to remove the that's my father. He was a very good I think 
after coming from the Indian college, it was in the good, good thinking, I'm not criticizing you. I want to encourage you that whatever I ask for the students to encourage the people. I was in, inspired by the visionary, one of the Luigi coming there, the Luigi shop and set up a also, who was uh, my father's friend, who, and that's why he was one who created the VGP Golden Beach in Chennai, uh, who believed that if you have a dream, 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 dream sleep on it and wake up to it. And uh, he would come home and talk to us about his motives, his goals. His only aim was to have one VGP everywhere in Tamil Nadu, and he did it. He taught me to play, and I played every day for being an internationally well-known ophthalmologist, which I didn't know the meaning when I was in first hand, but that was my prayer, and I achieved it, and I have to achieve more for the country. So right from my school days, I knew that I wanted to be an eye doctor. And being the third generation of ophthalmologist in my family, I never thought that I would be one, and I called it this, uh, I believe they have a product in my article of 3G methadone. And this is today's language, good orientation. And both my grandfather, Dr. Sakharikula, my father, Dr. Anasunam, studied and worked in the same hospital which is going to celebrate 200 years in 2019. And he flew to the same house in the same, not the same time. When, when uh, my grandfather was right after the hospital, he was the... He was the... Uh, he, he lived in the same uh, compound. And when I, when I was in the school, I lived in the same compound. And later, when he was in posted as an uh, eye doctor to start the eye camps, and even my grandfather had done eye camps, he had put me as a volunteer. So many of the assistant surgeons who were in my father's unit used to think that he was a, a real, uh, cr uh, like a criminal, uh, the, taking a child labor. But I think, fortunately, I never felt that. I have carried patients, I have written notes, I have even put torch for uh, those days. The surgery was done under the torch light and with a loop. The loop is something, a magnifying lens. And uh, his teacher was Dr. J. Abraham, who influenced me to a large extent at that point of time. He actually taught me all the parts of the eye, and now I never realized that I'll be a specialist. Uh, I'll be a specialist of one part of the eye. We have 15 subdivisions, and I, and then uh, he actually taught me. Uh, he asked me to rattle the parts of the eye, and I'm sure all of you studied the parts of the eye in the school, but uh, I'm not going to ask questions on that. So I I, uh, I, I used to. Also, he made me a room boy to open his clinic and also at the end of the clinic, I am supposed to alternate day, me and my brother I have to buy vegetables for the house. So we did the, actually the servant's job, we didn't have a servant. And uh, no wonder it has been said, learn to be with the wise and your life will follow and flow. This now I realize was an important quality for success and I all credit to my father. And when I was done with the clinic patient at home, I would look deep into my dog's eyes and discovered at a very young age that dogs have a glittering retina. And if you have seen when you are on the highway, I mean in city you can't see with too much of light. When in the dark, any animal comes and if you shine the light, the, 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 if you see now with the 3D graphics, they show their lion's eye sparkling. But it really sparkles because God has given them a sheet which is like a reflector. When the light is shown, like you can see the reflection back. And actually the dog was kind to me. I used to use the, the instrument to check the retina. And uh, since the dog allowed me, I also used to play with it and sometimes testing the patience of the dog. And I think I'm sharing this because you must be willing to do what you want. A healthy curiosity, desire to experiment is fundamental for success. And I think childlike attitude, that's what uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam keeps telling. And I think uh, any child asks why the moon is like this and why the sun is like that. And I think usually, Many times the parents just pass it off and I think uh, you have to give a scientific answer. You should not think, oh, you will not understand. O older people sit down and ask, what is it? But the child asks, what can I do with it? And that's what Steve Jobs did. And I, uh, I studied in a 175 years old school, in Madras Christian College School in Chennai. I was teeth, teeth for my dark color and I even called uh, some um, by names, but he took in my stride and learned to laugh it off. It wasn't easy to laugh with the crowd, but I hung there. And I think, I don't know how many of you read uh, about uh, the Michael Jackson and Barack Obama has confessed in his book that he was, uh, he became a drug addict because his mother was looking fit, uh, the white like a milk and father looked like pitch dark and he did not look like either of them and he grew up in Indonesia and he, because of the criticism he took up to drugs and the same thing happened with Michael Jackson, he almost, not almost, he died with uh, multiple surgeries to become fair and then uh, other is
superstar rajnikanth who also i think uh, was uh, condemned in the uh, is in um, chennai but i think later now you know who is the superstar it was easy to laugh with the crowd but i hung in there that's why probably i've learned uh, sense of humor and it's very important and i think whatever you do and it enables you to admit your own mistakes without making you feel that you have lost face psychology says smile when the world smiles at you and i joined the medicine after my pre university and i knew i had begun my journey to my goal i was like any other regular college student ready to have fun but i stuck to the values i was brought up with because at that time our medical college had the drugs at the headquarters for supplying to entire chennai and still that's why my parents were worried if i ever go to hospital for any party when i was that i refused to smoke and i even till now i don't smoke i don't drink and i was against and both the brunt of ragging but i was later respected for my courage to stand up for what i thought was right and you will not believe i only paid 234 rupees and that's the receipt i have preserved and kept when i joined medicine and i don't know how many of you when you go to school and college parents come but he allowed me to go and join after the school we i collected my own secondary the school leaving certificate joined in the pre university and joined medical college on my own and i think he didn't come and i i only remember that uh, i took i already did uh, because we had some extra curricular activities marks so i had a bag full of certificates and one of my classmates said that he, he, she was cursing me because she had i have so many extra curricular certificates and how will she get a seat and fortunately she also completed her uh, medicine so i am grateful always to i always salute mata pita guru deva for the wishes and blessings the i am sure you all agree this is the most sensitive part of growing up the college life i am glad i had a good peer group who were all keen on doing well in life i had my share of fun too uh, football long distance running actually i studied in a school where everybody was a champion i was left out because the our, our school was a 35 years champion for the city and uh, not even they used to take me as a reserve for any team including athletics uh, in spite of all the practice i was told that i am not fit so luckily in medical college in spite of the competition i went to my own classmate who was my mentor for athletics and uh, he was actually a uh, elder to me because he finished his degree and came to the mbbs and so he used to uh, like uh, teach me like when in the evening he'll become my teacher and my father was a tennis champion and because of that he used to go for tennis competition and he lost years in the college so he was worried that even if i take up sports i will probably lose years in the mbbs you can take any number of years to pass so he he say he, he took like quite some time and uh, so he thought i should not spend time in uh, uh, getting failed in exam and going for competition so i used to wear the uh, i don't know whether he knows he probably probably listen i used to wear the practicing shorts under the pant and then go practice and go back uh, with the wearing the pant so i think it, it helped me because i used to run in the beach i used to run in the water and also in the ground and i wanted to be a 400 uh, meter uh, Uh, record holder but my mentor made me a 10 km record holder i used to curse him that time because running 10 km race is not a joke but i think uh, even now i am in the gym but i don't like running but uh, my man my trainer keeps me making run and i feel i am running like a dog <laughs> i remember also i learned uh, our own class we did even though we were in tamil nadu we had the name as kelot seven manorajan which it was a intra class way where between our own sections we had competition apart from the various intermedical sports and everything i also was elected as the general secretary unanimously which is unheard in our college it was full of you know the college elections and and uh, i also well, I, I was like a, a represented college at various uh, levels i was also the only student to wear a tie in college in one day in a, a, and a, when we finished uh, actually i studied in a co-ed school from first standard to fifth standard three of us have become eye doctors and i am sure and i am also happy to say that i have done the best but uh, the that time in first standard to fifth standard the idea was if uh, any girl sit next to me i used to pinch her and get throw her out and get a boy and <laughs> and it was reverse happened when i joined the medical college so <laughs> so and then one day the girls decided we all will come in a Uh, silk sari and then uh, oh, the uh, guys decided they all come in a tie for so just like that for fun so that day i start wearing tie and i decided i will i enjoyed wearing it 
and after that I was the only one wearing and I think when you wear, you are the only one, I mean, I'm always impressed with Wellinger with your, uh, the dress code and I think it's great and uh, I know I could not impress that to my son even though he wants to do the MBA, he still feels this is too much to wear but I always wear this and, and I think that's my dream for my childhood and I think uh, we say, I think I always say dress to kill and I think uh, that's what I learned in my, uh, when I was in the college myself because I think in our uh, batch in 1975, and the students were from the interior of uh, all the villages of uh, Tamil Nadu who finished only Tamil medium and they suddenly come to English and they have a problem. So there's no question of any dress code and anything and in, in, you can wear anything and some and some professors will be. But we had all the people who are all a uh, member of the Royal College of England and fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons and they were all the great teachers and they used to come very well dressed but in spite of the students used to come very shabbily dressed. So I was the only one wearing and one thing I found is, when you wear, you have to pro follow your own code, code of ethics and if you make a mistake, the whole college will know who did it. And I also, I should confess, I think I also bunked boring classes. So it happened one day in second MBBS, that is 1976, I just, I got bored with the class because I, we joined medicine because we don't want to work on numbers and they started giving all formulas in biochemistry and it was so boring. So we had a small gap in the pillar where you can get out to the street. So we, three of us got out and just came out of the college and we didn't know who was the principal. One ambassador car came and he just told, come here. He said, what's your name? And I told my name, Natarajan, and he said, hey, what are you doing here? I said, the class, why did you come out? I said, the class teacher is boring. He just turned, he said, okay, and he asked me, who's the new principal? He told one, Dr. Ramurthy, but we, have you seen? He asked. I said, we, no, we have not seen. Okay, he said and went, and he made me a, undergraduate reformation committee member and also had said whatever is boring you have the choice to change and it was a great thing in 76 because medical college means it's slavery. Whatever professor says, if he says the rabbit has three legs, you have to say yes sir, otherwise you will be failed. But it was true. So that in that period, Dr. Ramothi was my father's teacher, he was a neurosurgeon, he, was, he used to operate ten brain surgeries, nine people will die. But still he was the greatest uh, neurosurgeon because in those days, nowhere in India the, the brain surgery was done. The previous group I had in my college also stimulated me to get into the habit of research and publication. So I was the youngest to do research in 1977 as a third MBA student. I took up this uh, Indian Council of Medical Research short term studentship and all the peers, because nobody used to research in college, everybody wants to have fun, waste time. But we used to work and I also, uh, like a, you, you won't believe, we wanted to study the effect of a drug on the heart using the, those days the echocardiography which nobody heard that time and now we have our remote machines and nobody came forward to get the drug and so it's a drug where it's called Lasix, when you inject you'll keep passing urine. So no, no, none of the because we wanted to have a control, we wanted to have a patient. Patients we had and control means the normal people and I couldn't convince anybody. So finally, I took first time and then they took off seven of my classmates and did the study. I think it's a lot of learning and I think uh, the people, uh, uh, because I think that anybody can do research, the only thing is you have to pursue your inner heart. During my life, the first person who has heavily influenced me is Dr. Vekat Sami, the founder of Arvin Group of Hospital and is a good friend of my grandfather as well as my father and me too. And he is the only one who knew the three generations of eye doctors. And he's seen me growing and he has come for both the inauguration of my hospital, which is, and I, I salute because he, all the five great hospitals of India have come to my hospital because we are ranked number five in India. And uh, the, uh, Dr. Venkat Sami actually was, uh, he is the one who is now no more. I went for his funeral. He's from Madurai. Have you heard of Ayurveda Eye Hospital? Not bad. How about Aditi Jo? Yes. So he was guided by a philosophy of Sri Aurobindo. You heard of Aurobindo? Yes. Where is the Aurobindo Ashram? Great. So that's what. He was the great follower of Sri Aurobindo and, and the mother that taught the spirituality of service driven by compassion far beyond the ordinary and backed by the support and assistance of those who believed in his vision. He was famously called as Dr. V, set in the motion a 30-year-old and still continuing crusade against blindness. And actually, he, uh, Dr. Venkatsami had uh, 
is a, a, he, he came from a place called Vadamalapuram. He was born in Tutukuran, which is uh, near the southern tip of India, Kanyakumari. And the same place, uh, a few kilometers away, in Pulasegarapattam, in another village, in the seashore, my father was born. It's about a few kilometers only. And when he was in the school, he saw a lot of uh, uh, childbirth and child dying, and the mothers dying. You can imagine the, the village had, because no doctors, only the midwife, the, the, uh, what do you call, the assisting people deliver, used to do deliver. And because of that, they don't know, some complication happens, the mother and the child dies. So he decided to help the community to become a gynecologist. He joined medical college, that is the same medical college where I, I did. And then he wanted to do uh, gynecology. But for his, uh, I won't say luck, but for his, he developed a disease called rheumatoid arthritis where his hands were crippled and became like a leprosy hand. And he was actually one year admitted in the government general hospital as a patient. And then in the, after that the treatment, he became all right, but he was crippled with hands like this. And he decided that maybe the, you, do you know why my father finally agreed to be a doctor? Because my grandfather forced him. And for me, it was my choice. And I used to get uh, first prize in physics and that was my dream. And uh, he used to encourage me. I was not, I was forced by my father. I'm, I, I don't want to force you. If you want, why not you do research in physics? I can imagine, like, a, unless you become like C.V. Raman, you will not be known. So, uh, anyway, I decided I'll do ophthalmology. But later, that time I did not know the entire ophthalmology is physics. And all the innovations are physics because eye is a, a, a total organ of refraction and everything what we use is engineering in uh, ophthalmology. And uh, the, he, he, with this hand, he decided, he thought, my father became an ophthalmology because he can work from uh, 7 to 1 and after 1 he can sleep. So that's what he, he became an ophthalmologist for and now we work from morning 7 to night 1. And I think ophthalmology was because they can only give numbers and they can only do cataract surgery and that was the status of cataract surgery, the eye doctor in 1960s. So we used to tell that you can have a torch and you can practice uh, this thing. So that's why Dr. Venkatsamy took ophthalmology. Now he did not realize that one day it will be a great specialty where everybody will need uh, eye care, whether you are young or old and then just wearing a glass also, you need an eye checkup. So he decided to be an eye doctor and when he was doing his postgraduate, his own colleagues condemned him as though he is untouchable and he used to make him sit outside the operation theatre. With vengeance, he went back to Madurai and he raised to the level of head of the department and also he became the vice principal of the Madurai Medical College. He retired in the year of 1976 and you know what he did? After 1976, after retirement, he borrowed money from the bank. He hired 11 uh, 11 uh, room, 11 bedded uh, place as a, on a higher uh, rental basis, it started the eye hospital, which is now the biggest eye hospital in the world. And I think they are doing the maximum number of cataract surgery in the world. And if you go to China, and China is lagging behind. They, are one, they have 1.3 billion population. <coughs> India, we have 1.2. We are unfortunately racing with them. And, uh, and still, we are doing five times more than uh, China and I think that way I went to Shanghai <laughs> I don't know there was a political talk in Mumbai that uh, Mumbai will become Shanghai do you believe that it can become why no yeah? if you become the minister you can so please become so I'm not I am seriously confident one day we have to do it and what I found in Shanghai is uh, every it's uh, the infrastructure is fantastic but Nobody knows English. And if you tell them to go to Portal uh, Park, they take you to some other place. And they're not cheating, but uh, still they don't understand. And they go stand there and say, their uh, Google shows that this is the place you have to go. I said, no man, we can't get on here. They don't understand that also. <laughs> and it's terrible. It was really terrible. And, uh, and uh, that's why I feel India can win China, even though they have won several billion dollar business from US. And they are also, unfortunately, they are copying things. And I think you can get a cheap iPhone. You can get a cheap, uh, uh, what is it, even the various uh, Louis Vuitton, everything they have. And I think I went for a French visa and I didn't realize that the law says in, Fran in the French government, if you wear a CK, that is a Calvin Klein t-shirt, which is uh, made in Mumbai, which is not supposed to be because of the copyright, and if you wear them and go, they, they can, the French government can fine you 200,000 euros. 
So I was really shocked. So I really, first time when I packed, I, I realized I should not take anything, a fake product. But they, unlike China, everything is fake. And it's terrible. And anything they buy, they, they break open. So they have brain, but I think uh, they can't speak English. So there's a long way for them to go. And uh, China is doing well with the infrastructure because the ministers are engineers. And I think uh, the, uh, we have to compete with them. And as I said, Dr. Venkat Swami did this greatest eye hospital, which all of us are proud. And I'm so happy because I'm born in the same temple town of Madurai. And I also believe one day I'll create a, a, a chain of hospital. And I'm, I just saw Prabhu Rude walking in with his help and with all the MBAs. Maybe he'll have everywhere Aditya Jyot. And uh, my uh, thing, other great man I dreamt to meet him, I couldn't meet, but I at least communicated was J.R.D. Tata. Because I do many things and it's a multitasking. And uh, it's, I, I thought it's there in it in all of you, but you have to develop it. And he said, most busy men do most of the things most of the time. And I've added, I say lazy men don't find time for anything. And this is another great man who became my friend, is Dr. Abdul Kalam. And I'm sure all of you know him. You cannot change your future, but you can change your habits. And surely your habits will change your future. And that's why I said one day Mumbai can become better than China. And I don't know how many of you read this book. How many of you read this book, uh, Wings of Fire? Very good. I don't know if this does it. Uh, you remember this? It's in page number 24 when Swami, when Dr. Abdul Kalam, he also was from the uh, same, he's in the another coast uh, uh, of Tamil Nadu, Rameshwaram. He was born there. And I think uh, he was. Uh, 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 selling newspapers because uh, he wanted some money to study. He studied in an ordinary school. He saw the seagulls and he wanted to be a pilot. So he didn't know even uh, English uh, when he completed the school. And he has mentioned that he went around Rameshwaram temple with his uh, father's friend who was the chief priest of Rameshwaram temple and went around the Rameshwaram temple and he said he got some electromagnetic energy and he didn't realize what it is. And his best friend was an ayer, that means a, a, a total Brahmin. And he was a Muslim and he didn't see any difference. And that's why he learned Quran and uh, Bhagavad Gita equally and he knows to recite well. And after he studied in the school, he went to a college called Madras Institute of Technology, not the uh, Massachusetts, in, in Chennai, in Krompet. After he finished his degree, he went for his interview to Delhi for the pilot and because of his height, and the look, he was deject, uh, rejected. And because of that, he was dejected. And he, I don't know why, he went to Swami Sivananda in uh, Rishikesh and he met him. And that time he mentioned, before, without even explaining, uh, he asked his name and he told uh, Abdul Kalam, he says, Swami Sivananda did not have uh, any uh, uh, change in his face, whether he was a Muslim or a Hindu or any religion. He, he knew that he was depressed and he immediately started telling what happened. What, and he said, I know your problem, but then, he explains to him, desire, when it stems from the heart and spirit, when pure and intense possesses awesome electromagnetic energy. The energy is released into ether each night and returns to the conscious state each morning reinforced. And this can be read upon as an ageless promise of sunrise and of spring. So nobody has to promise that sun will rise and sun will set. And uh, many times people complain, we are in a, a tropical country and we have too much of sun. But you should meet, I have friends in Germany, you should meet them. In during the winter, they don't see sun at all, and uh, they, when they go for work, it's dark. When they come back from school or college, it's dark. It's terrible, and I think they go in depression, and they have to get up. And I think we are lucky to have. And with, with, with sun, they also have vitamin D deficiency, and I'm glad we are in India with a lot of sun. The other great man who I read his book, I, I don't know how many of you read his Alchemist. So they, he says this, when you want something, all the universe conspires in helping you to achieve it. Who else has told this? <laughs> That's here. <laughs> so I think uh, in that movie, even though it was a fake story with the re uh, Sharad born again and doing, but I think it's true. And as I, as I, I told my dream, I decided to be a well-known, internationally well-known ophthalmologist. And I also decided to have a big eye hospital. And I, I decided in Chennai, but uh, so what? I have started in Mumbai, which is a better... Uh, uh, achievement where I didn't know Hindi, I didn't know Gujarati, I didn't know Marathi when I came. And I used to see the patient, I don't know next what to do. So I have to explain to him that you need surgery and I don't know, I have to call so many people to translate. And the other uh, people who influenced my life was uh, two doctors. One was uh, 
Dr. Daji Singh was the pioneer in doing the, uh, whenever we did a cataract surgery, we implant a lens and now it's become a routine. But in the 80s, and he was the only one doing in India, and then only he was from Amritsar. He used to come to Juhu and operate in Bombay, and later few surgeons in Bombay started doing intraocular lens. And he was using steel sutures in the eye, which was never heard of, and he had a colleague, John Wurst in uh, Amsterdam, and he used to call the, the seeing Wurst lens. And, and he, I assisted him in 1983 when I did my postgraduate in Government Eye Hospital in Chennai. And I decided that I should, and, and Dr. Reshmi came to, from Pittsburgh, he's there for the last 45 years, and he came to uh, Cochin and he introduced a procedure called, where you can do multiple surgeries in an eye, and I is so small and, and it was fascinated me and nobody knew how to do, I thought I would specialize in that, it's in the front of the eye, but uh, finally I will tell you how I landed up. And, I, and then also I attended the, and that's thanks to my father because he made me a member as soon as I joined the postgraduate as a life member of the All India Ophthalmic Society because he said he didn't have, his father did not give money, he was a eye doctor, money to uh, do many things like becoming a member of the All India Ophthalmic Society. And uh, I also attended the All India Conference in 1983 and I learned, that I did a course on how to do, use microscope to do surgery which was unheard at that time and after that all my professors used to think, they question me, oh you think you are great, you have learned which we don't know. So they, they locked the microscope, they didn't give me to use. So I am grateful to my father, he bought an industrial microscope where the microscope was very high and I used to bring the eyes inoculated from the eye hospital and then at home my mother was so strong, vegetarian and she used to you get angry that uh, you cannot bring the dead dead body and dead body parts and then they used to uh, like my, we used to keep it in the veranda so i used to operate here uh, as a postgraduate student and which i practiced all surgeries whatever i wanted to do in the enucleated eye which is actually removed from the uh, dead person and i learned a lot of skill and i went to dr badina uh, you heard of shankar netrale yes oh, good so he is my mentor who created Shankar Netralaya and this is Dr. Badinna who made me and yesterday only we had a, uh, I am the president of the alumni of the Shankar Netralaya and one day we want, yesterday I told him that every state, any meeting we have in India and there will be faculty only from, many of them are from Shankar Netralaya. He follows the inspiration of uh, words of Sankaracharya, the need to create a hospital with a missionary spirit. It inspired Dr. Badinna to start a charitable non-profit eye hospital in Chennai. And that's uh, in 1978 it was formed. The Temple of the Eye, more than, I think it's almost 1,000 crore empire now, servicing selflessly without any caste, creed or religious consideration. And the best part is it's been ranked number one in India for the last 20 years. And I think it's very difficult to remain number one. It's like a, in, it's like in the gym. You have to run in the uh, treadmill and you run faster if the speed is high to be the same in the same place and that's what Shankaranda is doing. And his message, which he again follows Adi Shankaracharya, where he said, not by penance, not by visiting holy rivers, not by reading scriptures, not by chanting mantras, because I chant a lot of mantras, same thing my father does, he doesn't believe in chanting, but only by performing selfless service to humanity can one cross the ocean of life. That means what Swami Vivekananda said, they alone live who live for others. And he's my mentor. So the media of a teacher tells, the good teacher explains, the superior teacher demonstrates, the great man, the great teacher inspires. And that's what he did. And I bow down to my guru every day because he is what taught what I am today. And uh, I completed my post-graduation in uh, University of Tamil Nadu. Uh, now it's the Tamil Nadu MGR University. And then I said, I landed up in practicing. Have you heard of the word vitreous in the toilet? Where are you? Sir? Pardon? Pardon? In the wash basin. Why is that? Any idea? So that's what I learned. As I, as I said as a child, you should ask questions. Nobody asks questions to anybody. And I, when I tell a patient that uh, you have a vitreous problem, they all think like you, totally gone. So tell me. You can tell me. You put your hand up. You can sit down and tell me. No, uh, what, what I didn't get you. Can you repeat what he said? I said there is a 
No, I know, but why it's there in the toilet? I agree. Now oh, you can tell. Very good. Fantastic. Give a big hand. And uh, there are so many vicious sirens in the world and many don't know the meaning of it. It's sad. And uh, that's why I'm actually, I've become the editor of the Indian Journal of Ophthalmology. So my editor is going to be etymology in ophthalmology. What is the entomology? An etymology? Pardon? Yeah, correct. I'm, I, I'm glad many doctors don't know that. It's a etymology, the study of science of origin of words. And I somehow learned that from that time because as a fourth year student, I used to teach my juniors. And I, I think innately it came as a teacher. And every time I ask the same question, well, I is full of etymology. You, you know the color of the eye is due to what? Somebody has, like I should have, I have the beautiful eyes. What is the beautiful part? Pardon? No, cornea is transparent, colorless. Pardon? Yes. You know the meaning of iris? What is it? Pardon? No, that's pupil. So that also has a beautiful meaning. Iris means it's a rainbow, rainbow of colors. So there somebody has blue eyes, somebody has green eyes. Like you have the, uh, what do you call, the, I think the Konkan bells have that green, uh, that's how Bangalore, I should have the beautiful eyes. And I, it's like the watch. If you have the disc, oh, like a color, how can you see the time? So the disc color, that's the iris, and the pupil is called, the beautiful meaning of pupil is little dancing girl. Where you put a light, the pupil becomes small, and go to dark, pupil becomes big, and it's dancing. So that's why it's called, and it's all in Latin and Greek. I know, I'm talking Latin and Greek to you now. <laughs> So I actually, when I went to, when I wanted to learn microsurgery and I said, I want especially in the front of the eye, I went to Dr. Bajanath. And actually I had promised my father that I will start a hospital with him. And suddenly when I went to, I finished my exam on April 15th, I think. In the evening I went to Dr. Bajanath and told I want only microsurgery training. And I want to go to Amritsar and learn uh, the steel sutures from Dr. Daljit Singh. And that's the time, unfortunately, the, the Bindranwala, the blue, blue star operation happened. So it was a war field like this, so it couldn't go. And Dr. Bajanath said, I don't have any training on microsurgery, but I have something called fellowship in retina and vitreous, you can do it. But all my father's colleagues said, if you do retina and vitreous surgery, every patient will be blind. Why the hell you are getting trained? And there are no many vitreous surgeons in the country and also in the world. And there are only three or four in India doing and at 84, he, when he said that, I also was doubtful and I joined the, his uh, field. One, one condition he told me is, even in your free time, you cannot go and work with your father. So I asked him why. He says, you have to have focus. You have seen the movie, Hey Kajanabi? Amitabh Bachchan, what is he working? What, what's his role? Yeah, but what's the lesson now? I'm trying to tell. He uses the word focus. What's that? So he, he actually goes as a bodyguard for the girl and the girl comes second in the swimming. But timing wise, her timing is faster than the, the person who comes there first. Then he, he, tells, he tells the girl why you, she cries every time because she knows her timing is 10 seconds something and the person who get, goes for 11 seconds gets the first prize and she gets the second prize and she cries. And he analyzes and finds that when you say ready, one, two and shoot in the air, she goes back because she's afraid of the sound and that to the pistol sound. So she goes back one second and then she jumps and she says, forget it, that you are in the competition, remove all sounds, ready, one, two, three, the top sound is the sound for jumping and jump. And that's what he teaches, he says, focus, focus, focus. And I think, and that's what Arvajinath wanted me to do. He didn't want me to assist my father in his private clinic, whether it's Sunday or late nights. So I had to tell him, which he felt very bad, I know that. My brother took over from me and he assisted him and I'm sure he sacrificed me to come to Mumbai also. But I made a choice to enter the eye care field. I was initially drawn to the remarkable feature of the eye itself. Not lost in my decision, however, was the realization that ophthalmology has a lot going for it. Primarily healthy patient and a nice balance of medical and surgical work. It takes luck, connections, brain, some lifestyle concession, years to transform a general eye doctor to a retina surgeon. And I don't believe the word luck. 
because I learned from how many of you believe luck here? You believe? How did you get MBA? Yeah? By luck? How did you get admission here? Did you get by luck? No. Can you say, do you believe luck? You didn't put your hands up. Why oh, you don't believe luck? Hey, luck is the word of cheating. So I have a slide on that. I'll tell you, but I don't believe luck and I put it there. But my Dr. Vajanath used to tell me 99% hard work, 1% inspiration. There's no place for luck. And I don't believe luck. The bad luck, good luck, all are, it's all created by yourself. And I, I say, uh, how many of you have read about retina? I don't know. The retina is the back uh, part of the eye. As you see here, the eye looks like a camera. And the empty space is the vitreous, as I rightly said, vitreous is the glassy. And that's why it's there in every toilet, in the flush and in the, in the uh, uh, wash basin. If you were, there will be some uh, company name and then the word vitreous is there. And I don't know how, but they are, and nobody has the observation. I don't know why. Many people don't see the word vitreous. And I think vitreous surgeons don't know the meaning. So, and also they don't know the name of retina also, which I'll write to them. And if you see here, the back part, the, this is the cross section of the eye and this is the exact center of the eye and that is called the macula and you believe this is only about 3 millimeters and 3 millimeters uh, area, 3 into 3 that's about 9 square millimeter and with that you enjoy the world, whatever you are seeing color, whatever you are seeing scenic beauty, whatever you are seeing uh, brightness and darkness and also what you are seeing fine vision. It's called, the, that's the place where, where you have the acuity of vision, bright vision and color vision. And all of us enjoy only that. And can you believe it's only 3 millimeters? And I have, oh, I, I have specialized in uh, the center of the eye and that's called the, so that's why I specialized vitreous retina and macula and uh, the most important part of the eye. And I think uh, we are now trying to replace it, which we have a big struggle. Because till now, there is no camera equivalent to an eye. The sweat and toil on the road to success. And after my ophthalmology, I approached Chief. You all used to call him Dr. Vajinath as Chief and told him about my desire to be a microsurgeon. He offered to train me in vitreoretina and also cautioned me that there were very few in India who had trained skills in vitreoretina and many surgeries fail and many patients are blind. But still I jumped at the offer because the, the way that uh, Shankar Nathalia was working was total transformation of technology from United States to Chennai. And nobody had a setup like that in India at that time. And second, whatever we thought we have learnt in the IO hospital, which is about 190 years old and was nothing because I, it's no uh, insult to the institution, but I think what I learnt is systematic way of uh, training, systematic way of examining the eye and also the instrumentation. And I was keen to try out my skills and after my marriage, I was excited to receive an offer from the Bombay hospital to set up a vitreoretina unit uh, by its founder, Mr. Taparia, Bharat Taparia. He was he is now the current chairman. And uh, my Dr. Bajanath cautioned me again moving to Bombay. But uh, the, the reason he said is Bombay is full of whales. Uh, all with, he will, they all will tell you, what will you do? You don't know the language. You don't have friend, philosopher, guide. How will you survive in Bombay? I was uh, my salary was uh, 19, in 1985 when I was doing the most complicated surgeries in India and also the youngest and doing the maximum number of surgery in India and in the hospital and probably better than my mentor which he himself used to tell which is I mean he is a great surgeon but I think greatness of him to write because I, I already look young and that time I was too young so patients would wonder how this young fellow will operate so he used to write a concern form saying that he is equal to me or better than me and he will operate better than me. Which doctor has the gut to tell because everybody is worried about competition and he never worried. And so when I wanted to leave, he didn't uh, leave me. It took almost six months to convince. He said, you convince every doctor in the hospital to leave. Nobody, who will say go? Nobody allowed me. He told me finally it's like cutting my right hand. But I said, I will, I will make you proud one day. And I said, whatever training you have given me, this part of the country lacks it. If I'm here, I, I can't train people there, so I came single-handedly, even though I had the family support, but I did everything. And I decided to stand on my own legs, and that's what the Aditi Jos was uh, born. But I, in 1985, my salary was only 2,000 rupees. And uh, since I was not married at that time, it was like a pocket money. I gave the entire money to him because 
I have to leave the house at 7.30 and come back at 1. Where is the time to spend? And uh, where Sunday morning, I had to come at 9 and go at 6 because we were doing academics that day. And I think uh, never a minute I regretted, except my mother used to cry, I can't see you at all. But I said, what I was doing, nobody understood, even though he made me analyze my own surgical results in 1985-86. I have done hundreds of surgeries that year and I had to run the maximum number and I found only 30% was seen. 70 percent was blind. It, didn't, uh, it was a problematic. Only thing Dr. Vajinath told me was, if you are not operated, all 100 would have been blind. So and now the success rate has increased to 90 percent. So life is a series of experiences with which one should follow intelligently. I accepted their uh, offer under two conditions in Bombay, offering me the head of the international department and providing me accommodation. Because I told him, uh, like I don't want to go. He said, you have a father-in-law here. So I asked him a question. Will you go and stay in your father-in-law's house? He said, no. And why the hell are you asking me to go and stay? I said, I want a loan. You give me the loan, I'll repay. So he, I told him, give me an interest-free loan. But he said, hey, you'll give me a low interest. He gave. And and my salary when I left Shankaranathala in 1988 was only 4,000 rupees. And I know that when during my uh, career, we had a, a, a consultant. I know the hospital was earning in lakhs and I remember sitting in the meeting and when they were discussing the charges, increase the charge for the patient, I always told sitting in the last row because I was the youngest consultant, when will they increase our salary even though at that time I was married. So 4,000 rupees was terrible because when you go for a lunch or a dinner, I had to, I had to really calculate that okay the bill will come 80 rupees with tax. So we accordingly arrange, uh, uh, choose the menu and eat that much because otherwise you don't have money to pay for the next week. And in spite of that, I think uh, we were happy and uh, that time the offer, I came to Bombay to uh, All India Conference in Bombay Hospital and that time they offered me, will you come and join? I said, uh, they told me, you know, from instead of 4,000, we'll pay you 20,000, will you come? I said, money is not important and I went back. But the surgeons from here came, two of them stayed with me and insisted that I should come. So I came for an interview and I asked whatever they, plan, they actually uh, promised me was, I had a second mentor who was an Yugoslavian, Dr. Raja Jovanovic, from uh, born in uh, a place called Montenegro, where, uh, uh, you heard of the country Montenegro? Okay, it's part of, earlier part of the Yugoslavia. And he lived in a city called Herzegnovi, where the World War I started. And uh, actually from there, he was born to an eye doctor, another was eye doctor, but he became an eye doctor only at the age of 33. And I went to training for him. I was only 29. He used to tell me, at the age of 31, you are a medical director and I am. At the age of 33, I started surgery. And he revolutionized ret retina surgery in the world. And he's still living. He's 80 plus. I went and spent some time with him in Montenegro. It's very difficult to reach there, but I went. Beautiful place. And uh, he actually uh, had the same problem. Like when you're coming from India, the people, Western world looks at you down that time. Now we are better and we are doing excellent. And uh, they, he came from Eastern Europe and the Western Europe always looks down at uh, Eastern Europe because of the lower economy. And uh, in spite of that, he trained himself well. He did all surgery and then uh, his, uh, when he was my, he had the best uh, surgical videos. That means uh, he could record the 16mm projector and he had a camera called Ikagami, which is the most expensive. That's how they gave me the bait. Bombay invited me by saying, whatever Dr. Jovanovich has, we'll give you. But unfortunately, they cheated me. And I think uh, that helped me. And that's how Ayurveda Jyot was born. Because I decided that uh, if, uh, if I have been trained and I don't want to go back the, to Chennai because I didn't get whatever I wanted. Having come from a disciplined and traditional practice, the Chalsa High attitude was a big problem for me that I saw in Bombay. Didn't do a bit for my ethical issue. Moreover, the inability of the hospital to install the required eye surgery equipment required for exclusive retina practice as I am was a big disappointment. And frustration began to creep in and actually I got very frustrated and I went back to Shakri and and I operated like mad from morning to night and when my son was born, I came back. And this prompted me to think of setting up an exclusive retina center of my own and my again my earnings were from 4,000, maybe only 20 or 30,000 a month. And with that, how do we do a, a 60 lakh uh, project? Because I decided that if I start, I will do the best. And otherwise, I will not start. So one day, one Dr. Srinivasan from Bank of India, who was impressed with his wife's treatment, he said, Kashmali, if you have the guts, we will give you the loan. 
So I said, what's the problem? I said, I have the guts. I come all the way from Chennai to Mumbai and from Church Gate to come to Dadar. What's the problem? The enigmatic message was all that I needed to follow up on. Why didn't I start my own private practice was a thought that kept running over and over in my head. And I went to Mr. Bharataparya and told him that I would like to be a visiting consultant so that three days I can earn more outside with my own equipment. He said, if you have guts, leave right now. I just told him, yes, I am going. I gave him a three months notice and I walked out. And I have saying, nothing to look back. And I still remember the day, that was I think in July, no, not July, March 90, when it was the 14th floor in Raheja Chambers. He called me when I was leaving the door, he said, in case, he, doctor, it is like jumping from here and doing a suicide at that time, he said. I said, you know, even from jumping from 14th floor, somebody will have that net and I'll come up in life again. And he told me, if you fail, you can come back. I said, thanks for your excellent advice. And I came back. And now I think, whatever I have, why Bombay Hospital, even Shankar Leather does not have. I had a think or two about myself while I was growing up. As a child, when your mother tells you, don't touch anything, and that's what you want to do. And I think that's what I do. And this defines my philosophy in life. The ones who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who do. I think you should have read about Steve Jobs. And true progress has to be defined. To maximize that what you have is progress. You must be the change you wish to see in the world. And that's what Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi said. The vision of setting up my own exclusive center dawned on 15 July 1990 at the Dadar in Vikaswadi. We combined three flats and made a high hospital. And that was the symbol I used in 1990 as a triangle. And the word Aditya means sun god, giving light to the world. And Jod means lamp, giving we're uh, spreading uh, light across and that's how I will use the word Aditya Jyot and this was the building which we started and in 90 when I started everybody was uh, telling what can you do in Dadar because even Bharatapariya told me that you are leaving a big hospital and going to laborers area now you know what's happening to Parel and Lois Parel and I think even Dadar so he said who will come to you I told him if they want eye surgery and, exclu and uh, excellent surgery they will come to Dadar if they want only five-star treatment, they'll come to you. And this institute grew in time and added many more divisions of the eye care. So I started as an exclusive retina center. And uh, that means only one part of the eye I was dealing and other parts I didn't do. Even now I don't do. I only do, uh, I'm restricting from vitreous the big part of the eye and I'm restricting only the center part of the retina. And eye has 15 divisions. Eye looks so small and without it, you, and if you close your eyes, and uh, eat your food for five minutes, you'll know the importance of eye. And, uh, that, and we have now all the subdivisions of the eye care. And now we have uh, the biggest eye hospital in Mumbai. And thanks to Mumbaikers and Maharashtra, which uh, I, I, uh, lots have given uh, for me. And I'm a Mumbaiker now. This is a new symbol. We use the, the rediffusion mail that group to make this new uh, uh, symbol. And there are, as usual, when you change anything, Everybody wants to object in the hospital. They said it's a old uh, in logo. So I think change is the only constant thing I follow. And I hope all of you do that. And whatever I studied and whatever I learned how to do operate, I don't do this procedure. Everything is different. Everything is changed. And, and I think change is the only constant thing. The International Agency for Prevention of Blindness has a program called Vision 2020, which has also been the motto for our RGJ. We are also strongly propagating the cause of eye donation. Recently, we have focused on awareness of the cancer of the eye, which is seen in that movie, Marathi movie, Swash. And this is our hospital, which is in Vadala. And uh, I welcome you all, not as a patient, just to see the success story. And we have the several things in first in India, first in Mumbai. And I think uh, we have all services A to Z in uh, our hospital. And uh, the other one for you guys, and MBA, a networking and marketing skills must for success. And I actually jokingly used to tell in school and college, Natarajan is for N and N is for networking. And I bought the first Nokia at that time, like a brick. The MBA program nowadays teach you importance of marketing and networking skills. I had a national flyer and made myself go to conferences over weekends, join associations, network with people and promoted myself and the hospital. There's nothing, this is what I learned from my secretary of the trust in Chennai. There's nothing, you should not be shy in earning money and name and fame. So I think uh, you should propagate and if you are good, why not? And uh, I was a one-man show handling marketing and PR of the hospital. Now I have a big team sitting here. And I have known in my 
friend circle is a man who never forgets birthday is an anniversary, which I started as a habit in school and it, go, it goes on. And I always believed in the personal touch. And the, the habit was given by my friend Ganga Prabhakar, who is a cardiothoracic surgeon in the US, who has come to India, so I am going tomorrow to Baroda to celebrate his birthday. And everybody thinks I am mad, leaving work and going. No, I work early and I catch the flight in the evening and come back day after. Same thing I did today also. Even now sometimes my secretaries forget to remind me, but my brain has developed this habit of remembering. So when I get up, I know today is somebody's birthday. And along with fathers, I was instrumental in setting up the Society, Vitreas and Ratna Society of India, which is now started in 1992. And now over the 20 years, the exclusive group has expanded to about 530 retina surgeons, with over 90% of the Indians actively practicing with retina specialists as its members. Success means different things for different people. For me, achieving my goals and having a clear path for future growth meant success. I am not content with what I have achieved. And I think Bhagavad Gita says to be content, but I think you also have to have an outstretched hand to achieve your goal. And I want to innovate, update and grow. And I, I remember the word innovate from V school. And I, I, I already asked you in the beginning, what does career success mean to you? I think all of you should write your answer. Because when you only tell or somebody asks like me like this, you may, you may say something, but you may not really mean it. But when you write it, you know that it will be very difficult for you to write. And discuss your answer with your learned, learned partner. And it's a dream until you write it down. And then it's a goal. Success is a process. When using your success recipe, it takes time to learn from your mistakes. Very difficult to accept your mistakes. Constant learning and practicing makes you better what you're doing. That increases your chance of success. And the key ingredient for your career uh, success, a general helping of working hard, avoid any badly enough, go beyond passion for action, Forget that you are a talented worker. Always add a smart plan, skills and knowledge. Look for a mentor. Uh, a smart plan. A career success is never complete without a smart plan. What is smart plan? Quite simply, a smart plan is one that is specific, measurable, achievable, results focused and time bound. And that's why again you focus on vision. Enjoying the process of career success, clarity of vision. And I am sorry to say many eye doctors don't have this vision, the inner vision and conviction to succeed and confidence to be. And you need to believe that you are the, in charge of your own destiny. So that's why I don't believe luck. Everything starts and ends with you. You are the one in control, no one else. And you are the creator of your own destiny. It's in your hands. Pushing for career success. Your best is good enough. Balancing pride, passion and belief. Have fun with your career success recipe. You succeed by not rushing nor lazing off. You are your own competitor. I think that should be the best. And that's why they say golf is the best because you compete with yourself. You succeed by not rushing, nor raising out. Quest for success is never ending. Keep walking. And you are your own competitor. Your inner scorekeeper knows when and if you are capable of more. And he, she may be a very demanding world. And I think you have to push yourself. And I now, I, I think uh, I learned from Prabhupada Desalak and other friend in Dr. Devi Shetty, who runs the Narayana Hiridharya, mentions that uh, you have to get out of your comfort zone. So he, he's telling me, I'm in a comfort zone, that's why I'm not still made branches. My idea is very clear, I, I, I don't want to make branches to make more money, but you need more money to make more branches. The idea is to, to provide quality care and that's what is mine. There's only one corner of the universe you can be certain of improving and that's your own self. Believe in yourself, be confident can do it. And I think I was like this, but uh, this picture I didn't have, well, uh, I didn't become like this, but I'm glad my dad made me like this. He said, you can do it. The critical success factors, if I have to choose critical success factors in achieving success in your career, these would be my choices. Belief, action. Because everybody doesn't talk about action, sincerity and discipline. Stay focused on your future. You've got to break the professional barricades through visualizing your future. Envisioning your future will power you so that you can keep going on regardless of any setbacks in life. When I started the hospital, I did a, a press release and I think I had a press conference and we wanted to make sure that we are the first in India to have an exclusive retina center. When I gave an interview, and a mistake is, we gave a cocktail party and after the Times of India a reporter was drunk, he asked me a question, why did you come to Mumbai? Only to make money. I said, no, I came to Mumbai because not many are doing retina surgery. You know what he wrote in the next day paper? All papers covered very well. And he wrote, Dr. Natarajan mentioned 
that all other eye doctors are ignorant about retina. And that was a big problem. And I, the Bombay Ophthalmology Association wanted to take stern action on me. They wanted to strip me of the degrees and wanted to complain to Medical Council of India. I had to apologize to the entire ophthalmic fraternity. I did not mean it. They told me to give an apology to Times of India. So I went with the editor of the Indian Express to go and apology to Times of India. You know what the editor said? He was again a Tamilian. I mean, you know, there's nothing to do with the line, but he said, he took coolly in Tamil, don't worry doctor, it's all uh, public memory is short. I said, public memory is short, my colleagues and my competitors in my mind is not short, they all want to kill me here and they want to use this as a, against me. But I think, uh, uh, anyway, I tried, I gave it in writing to the society, I also apologized and we conducted, and I started the conference in uh, uh, Tejpal Auditorium and we had the inauguration in Dadar and it was pouring like anything. And everybody was worried. I said, nothing doing. We will do the program, and wh whether it is uh, raining or uh, uh, shining, and I think we did it. So I also follow the book Secret by Rhonda Byrne. Whatever is going on in your mind is what you are attracting. You are like magnets. Like attract like. You become an attract, what do you think? I know one day my father went to my, my secretary, who is now in Jabalpur, and he told her that uh, how come when I was in uh, the helm of affairs in government eye hospital, I did not, did not get help. That nobody will help you. I think uh, you have to desire and you have to attract and you have to work for it. I think that's where action has to be there. An affirmative thought is hundred times more powerful than a negative one. Decide what you want, believe you can have it and believe you deserve it. So I remember in my childhood I wanted a BMW or a, or a Mercedes and I always thought I think one day I'll get it, not now, not now and it never happened. One day I decided I'm going to buy and I bought it. And I think, and, and you have to deserve it. That means you have to work hard. You, have to, you should not get anything free. There's no free lunch, as the Americans say. And I think, I'm sure you have earned your, core, your seat here as well as you complete your MBA. And whatever you do want to do in life, you will believe it. You will learn to deserve it. And believe it, it's possible by you and for you. And I am a follower of this 3F rule, which is what I do with every patient. I ask the patient, how much is your faith with God or yourself? Some atheists say, oh, I don't believe God. I said, okay, how much you believe in? Either he said, I believe only you. I said, okay, how much is your faith? They say, I have 100% faith. And everybody, how many of you are worried of exams? Only few, huh? great. But I was always afraid of my exam, exams. So I have stopped going for exams, but I'm examiner. So I, I keep telling, I make sure the student is comfortable. Where my hands used to sweat, and I think I had full of fear. And I thought, when I'm praying, when I'm chanting mantras and I know I'm good, why should I have fear? It took me so many years to understand that. Last 20 years, I have following this because when I pray and I operate, I have a complication. I used to cry more than the patient internally and I was worried. My BB was going up. So I decided that uh, what, what's the problem? So the problem is, all of us say that we have 100% faith in whatever exam, studying or everything. But you have a fear. The fear of exam is, if you have 100% faith, Fear should be zero. If you have fear, I call myself as a fraud. So whenever I am worried, I am a fraud. And I now I know there is no fear for anything. Even if somebody comes with a gun, it's okay. I want to shoot. Go ahead. And use obstacles to help you. And they bring out the best in us. And mistakes are painful when they happen. But years later, a collection of mistakes is called experience, which will guide us to success. And uh, I don't know how many of you know that uh, even Coca-Cola was a mistake by pharmacist John Pemberton and there's a John Pemberton Museum in Atlanta. And penicillin is also another, that was a life-saving drug once upon a time and it was also accidentally found by Alexander Fleming. Success also means research and mission for the blind for me and academics and that's my passion. I always say publish or perish and that's for the medical field, I don't know about your part. So we have made a high institute of vision sciences and research. The idea is I believe in R&D and we also work through that uh, and research is formulated curiosity, it is poking and prying with a purpose and research serves to make building stones out of stumbling blocks. And many hurdles combined with estimated low return on investment due to very small patient population have usually discouraged the pharmaceutical industry from developing drugs for rare diseases despite the huge medical need. I don't know how many of you know the Nobel Prize winner in 2005, the guy actually found that one bacteria produces peptic ulcer and not uh, drinking or smoking or uh, spices. And because of the drug companies were uh, blocking him 
and they didn't allow him to prove. So he took the bacteria himself. He was an Australian uh, scientist, doctor, and he took the pep uh, medicine and he developed peptic ulcer and operated and proved it's an infection called Helicobacter bacilli and he got the Nobel Prize. So uh, I have my dream is also to get the Nobel Prize and make the blind see. And medical and scientific training and a research climate in which investigators can work continuously and, and productively should be realized. And we at our hospital have a research de uh, department and I think uh, when I studied, uh, half the, uh, I, uh, the book what we were studying, we could not practice. And that's what I have specialized. And in that, I think we have covered about 30 or 40 percent. Still, lots more to go. One of the favorite, uh, my research project is artificial retina. Because there is no human, there is no any equipment equivalent to a human eye or no camera. So to replace a, a, a like a ear, they have artificial ear which works cochlear implant. But for retina, unfortunately, I spent five years in Indian Institute of Technology. I don't call it a waste, but it was a terrible experience because finally they gave up and they told me that uh, uh, we can't do it. And I thought we are the best in software and I thought we are the best in surgery. Why can't we combine? But I could not uh, impress both IIT Mumbai and IIT Chennai. And uh, stem cell is another uh, region which we are doing and research with uh, Hamburg University, but unfortunately still not successful because stem cell is when you inject, it should form a particular part of the body and when you inject in the eye, we want the photoreceptors to grow so that the retina can be replaced by a natural retina, which is still a long way to go. This is the work done by my friend Mark Mayan in uh, Los Angeles and one, he feels that the one day this artificial retina with a uh, camera and everything will come and they have done some human experiments. They are able to, one of them have died already, the patient, and uh, one day it will come, I don't know when. And unfortunately in the press, every two days some articles say London they have done and uh, so the patients come and ask me, what the hell doctor you have done? I said, you are a part, you are an Indian citizen. Did you question the government of India how much you have done for the research, for the blind to see? And you are not bothered about them and you want, you have a reduction in vision and you want us to do research. And if you do both, where's the time? So that's why I am going to actually reduce my regular work and do research. And, that, and that's why I can see one day I can get the, so you have to work for it. And I don't, nothing is free as I said, to even get the Nobel Prize I am. To get the thoughts, we had the first uh, uh, Nobel Prize winner of uh, in medicine in eye was one Alvar Gullstrand who made the instrument for eye in 1911 and we, decided, we, uh, we celebrated 100 years of uh, Nobel Prize and eye doctor got. Can you believe after that and he was the same Alvar Gullstrand was an eye doctor who blocked the Nobel Prize for Einstein in uh, 1911 but still he, uh, he was, uh, no, uh, you know what Albert Einstein was famous for? He did not get the Nobel Prize for it. You know that? You know that or no? He didn't get for that. He got for the photo, uh, the other, other one. And you know who blocked it? I doctor. So I wondered how much he had brain to understand what Einstein did. And I don't know whether it's politics, but it's fact. That, that's why there's a book called Road to Stockholm. Many people who have aspired did not get the Nobel Prize, but I think I am confident one day I will get it. We have a lot of teaching courses and that's the reason I love teaching and I'm, that's why I am a good friend of Uday uh, Sadhanji and I am sure he didn't call me for friendship, but I think uh, we, want, we, we want to impart knowledge. And we also have, and my father heads the Ajitra Institute of Optometry and he being an eye doctor, he decided that he will support optometry students. Optometry is a branch of uh, uh, like a paramedical course where after plus two, four years they do the course. And the evolution continues and I think uh, I, I, even though I don't know much, I have not done any computer training, but I am a, a tech savvy because uh, the all entire presentation is in iCloud and I download it in the mobile and I'm in iPhone I can present. I have uh, also made a blog and uh, maybe uh, Chandana can give you the blog and also the, I have made uh, a special application for uh, eye care in iPad application. We are the only ones to have, except the United States and the rest of the world. And this is what uh, you have the eye care on your fingertips, which is in the uh, iPad application and iPhone application. And we also have the journal in the phone and Indian Journal of Ophthalmology, which is a peer-reviewed journal. And uh, we have a blog, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. The main idea is because any doctor, or if you go, I'm sure all of you have gone, 
and many times patients believe the doctor. I am not saying not to believe. But what I am saying, there is a Tirukural which says, like a, whatever you receive knowledge, either from your teacher, your guru, or whoever it may be, please analyze. Don't, don't just take it by the face value that he is a great man he is telling. And that's what probably Alvar Gastran did. But I think that's why I am interested in patient education. But the game changing in practices, I want to give truthful uh, information to every patient. And patient should know what we are doing. And if the patient can't see with your treatment, tell him up front why do you want to keep him and want to hear. I say I am happy to hear that none of you want to do an MBA to only make money to do serve the country and I, I believe it. And this is the spirituality I've learned. Never think of the past, it brings tears. And don't think of the future, it brings fear. And live the second, it brings tears. And uh, these are the two Brazilian girls. And I like dancing. And I dance every weekend. And uh, I also have a dance teacher. I'm learning salsa, cha cha cha. <laughs> and I don't know how many of you have heard the dance bachata. Not bad, only one hand goes up. And I was shocked because I went for a bachata workshop in Blue Frog. And uh, it was amazing. They have a, a, in All India meet, they have a Southeast Asia meet and international meet in Berlin. I said, my God, I thought only of the eye doctors ever, the, the cardiologists have. So, it's all in the power of thought. Yat Dham Tad Bhavati. You become what you think. World is manifestation. I, actually, this is a repetition. I hope I can convey this and if I have done only this part, I think probably you all will learn the lesson for life. The world is manifestation of our inner state. Perceived reality eventually becomes manifested reality. We perceive a thought containing a change or emotion. The process of creation is set into motion. An arrow has been released into ethereal planes or thought sphere. So always think positive. And uh, in, the, in, in, the, in this, yesterday I, I used this as uh, yesterday's history, tomorrow's mystery and present in the English uh, grammar, present means gift. We say we give a present and actually this moment is the, by any moment, I mean there is a book called Power of Now and uh, which says whenever it was, it is a now. It was earlier also, that time it was now, tomorrow also it is going to be now. So enjoy the moment. So its problem is when we work, we remember home problem or some other problem and when you go to work, uh, when you go home and you remember the office problem, so you don't enjoy any moment. So I tell this, enjoy life moment to moment. So when the patient says that I cannot see, I tell them, if you cannot uh, see, you can start feeling. Both. And thank you very much. Close open for Q&A. Yes. And you go. First of all, it was a very inspiring story. So my question is just out of curiosity. So now you have uh, told me about the researches of stem cells and how they can be applied. Nowadays we are witnessing the news of uh, various organs being grown yes. in laboratories yes. using stem cells. It, it won't be too far to imagine uh, a body's market. I mean, the body parts will be <coughs> will be sold and bought in a marketplace kind of a situation. So, what will be the impact of it, uh, ethically, socially, medically, and will it cure blindness? No, one day it will cure. See, blindness is a broad term. It is like a a blind means like there are hundreds of causes and I am talking only about the causes of retina and in the retina like there is something called sudden blindness due to suddenly somebody loses the vision in a, a person who has minus number we call the myopia they develop retinal detachment and that's what I have specialized or in a diabetic they suddenly develop blood that is curable today and that has a success rate of 90 to 95 percent and now the entire eye surgery is done sutureless and once upon a time we open and we have to close now we do micro surgery we enter the eye through the keyhole surgery, 0 0.5 millimeter, and then we do everything. So I think that blindness due to diabetes, blindness due to age later mentally, we have several injections. Most of the things are treatable, but still everybody wants to have, it's like more and more they want, that, that's becoming greedy. But one day many blindness can be treated. There are works going on in genetic engineering. 
where there are genetic disorders called retinitis pigmentosa, there's no other treatment. Once uh, when we know that a genetic engineer is going to work, because my friend who is the director of research and he's my classmate from school, they have identified the gene for this particular disease. So you know the gene, you can manipulate it. But still, genetic engineering has a lot of ethical issues because we don't uh, like uh, one of the patient wrote in my visitor book, if whenever cloning is going to be ethical and the first preference should be given for me. Because patients are waiting there and they want but I love this more than patient. I'm not saying I should not treat the patient, but I have got several doctors like me and I've told every doctor to tell the patient that you want to be better than Dr. Natarajan, that's why you're working there and I'm here. So I think one day stem cell will come, but there is no server rogue nevarni. That means you cannot have one stem cell and say everything will be done. No, there is a problem. See, and I remember attending a symposium where how uh, uh, good or how noble is the doctor's profession. How many of you think doctor's profession is noble? I am very happy here. Yeah. But actually, unfortunately, if you read the papers and everything, and I am Satyama Vijayate, Amir Khan. No, really, I think he brought out the fact, and there are good and bad everywhere. If there are like the, so in that, I think the lesson is, People are greedy. So what they, you know, when I went and I attended with Dr. Bhadana, one Dr. Mishra was a cardiologist and they called a politician, they called a, um, the IS officer. Why people are bad? So it is like I remember the psychology, uh, uh, I went for a parenting when my son was in first time in Bombay Scottish. The psychologist said the high school students are bad. Why? They said, no, the uh, lower, lower school teachers were bad. The lower school teachers said kindergarten is bad. Finally, the kindergarten said, no, all the teachers are good, the parents are bad. And the parents said, their parents are bad. So, everything comes from within. So, I think the whole thing is with you. So, it's like, a, I don't know how many of you heard of Dr. Dirubayamani Hospital, in, uh, uh, which was actually a Nitu Manke, who was my best friend, whose daughter died of Dr. He developed that hospital and he was a single saying 250 crore hospital will do, but unfortunately, he died of heart attack himself. So he, like, uh, I used to tell that we can do, okay. Uh, so what I was saying, I forgot, reading this. <laughs> <laughs> so what's what I told the story, I forgot. Anyway, coming back to the ethical issue, I think the, there are good doctors and bad doctors. And I think uh, if, uh, if the law is not uh, controlling, for example, in uh, India, you can't even enucleate an eye, that means remove the eyeball without the consent. But in US, it's a, like one is voluntary consent, they give it in the driving license. And also, in the hospital, if somebody dies, there's a law. In India, you, you cannot, even if somebody dies in the hospital, unless the relatives, kith and kin, use the consent, you can't do. Same thing for the stem cells. So I think uh, we have to have regulations and make sure that uh, yeah, everything is done ethically. Actually, uh, that, that's true, uh, like yesterday I went to bed at 1 in the morning or 1.30 and trying to prepare for this and then uh, I got up at 4.30, called, went to, took my father and came to the airport in Chennai and standing in the line everything, but I slept in the plane. See, my father had breakfast, I didn't have breakfast and I don't eat in the plane, I don't like the food. So the thing is that uh, it's in the mind. I, if you read the book uh, Robin Sharma, he, he says that uh, everything is created twice. One in the mind and the other in the reality. So that's what Napoleon Bonaparte did and also uh, Hitler did. See, they win the war in the mind and they do, and then go in the next day into the army and win. And the same way Russians knew how to defeat Hitler, they brought him into the winter and their soldiers were killed. So I think it's in the mind. So and Napoleon Bonaparte was sleeping while he was on the horse riding and he had, I think, six people assisting him. So that's how I think one of the patients told me this, that it's in the mind. So he decided that he will sleep when he's traveling in the horse and then fight the war as soon as he gets up. And that's what I do. And I think uh, 
the uh, main thing is the uh, other man is Dr. Uh, Deepak Chopra. He is an MD physician from India, but in US he is an Ayurvedic uh, doctor and also the, for the lifestyle doctor for uh, all the uh, Hollywood stars in uh, famous ones. And he is written, but I don't think he is following because he become old. Because he is written um, a book called uh, Ageless uh, uh, Body and Timeless Mind. So I think it's a beautiful book. He is written, you can defy every voluntary action of the body. That means involuntary action of the body. The heart rate, the pulse, which has been proved in yoga, you can do that. And also in uh, your uh, in athletics and also in the gym, I know that you can control your heart rate. In spite of you run fast and your heart rate, we have a formula which doubles the uh, weight uh, that much only you can allow. But you know you, you can moderate that. And also the breathing, which is done by yoga which I don't do yoga because my problem is when the yoga teacher tells me close your eyes and relax, I go sleep. <laughs> so my many people thought I have disease. My mentor Dr. Bajanath used to tell me I have a thyroid disease. You are talking and you want to sleep, you sleep off. And that's what I do. So I think it switch on and switch off and everything is in the mind. So I believe if I, I, I have done a 10 kilometer race, I have done 5 kilometer and 1.5 in 2 days in intermedical sports. And after that, we don't sleep because we win the athletic event for intermedical and then whole night we celebrate. And I think I never was tired. And, we, and when you decide, oh God, I have to sleep six hours, then only I can get up. I dance till three and I upload from seven. So I think the other thing which I jokingly tell, which came in the last few week, uh, Sunday, Mumbai Mirror, I don't know how many of you read, page number 10, Chili Pedia. So actually, I believe three things. One is I uh, eat chilies, but I don't have reference. I am the only standing reference, so I am planning to write an article. And the other is uh, always be cheerful. And uh, it's not uh, covering up your problem. I have hundreds of problems which uh, I don't have to mention, but uh, what I am saying is problems are going on. Like there is a court case going on and my secretary is sitting in the court, I am here. And uh, absolutely no problem. And, and second is how you look at life. I think uh, you decide that the things will go on and be happy. And I think uh, there is a post called happiness guru in Harvard University. I think one day I will do that. So the idea will be, I think, whether you sleep or not, you decide. Okay, two hours sleep. You go to a doctor, he'll say, you have to sleep six hours, you have to eat well. So every, all my friends say, they think like I will burn out. But there are CEOs who have died at 45 and 50 and 55. Can you guess my age? Oh, you are not guessing, you know the age. <laughs> Okay, I keep telling I'm only 18 and I have decided. I will not grow, I don't wear glasses. So all my friends, I don't have to tell, including my father, I am cheating. But I read. What I did is I enlarged the fonts. And I don't wear glasses. So I decided in child that I will, because I know the difficulty, everybody at the age of 40, if you don't have the glass, they are helpless. So there are five glasses. So I think it's in the mind. Finally, everything is created by mind and you follow it. For example, I wanted a big hospital, I did it. I want to dance, I did it. I want to paint papers, I did And I want to do research, I did And that's how I am going to get Nobel Prize. And I think uh, then I will tell you. Already I did two meetings in, in uh, Stockholm where uh, Nobel Prize is given. And Nobel Prize is given for medicine in Karolinska Institute. And we already have an MOU. And the high hospital attached to it has uh, the same 25 years we are going to celebrate in 2015. That's the level our people also unfortunately did 
all doctors went to get trained and the, it's, I always tell it's like the fly in the sweet shop. You know, everybody wants to go and uh, go ahead, get uh, 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 fascinated with the streets and road and the malls and the operation theater and the instruments. I decided that I am better than everybody and that's what is my drive. And I said we have to be in top of the world because the, uh, in India we had the Nalanda University 10,000 years back I think and then we had Shanti Niketan and we were and Dr. Venkatswami was telling the man whom I said, he said in the, uh, I don't know, I think it's seven, I don't know which century is, I forgot, no, Madurai. Have you been to Madurai Meenakshyam in temple? Yes, yes. It's an engineering marvel and, and also the Tangu temple where it's an again engineering marvel. The Tangu temple is the, uh, the what do you call the top, uh, what do you call that, uh, triangular part, which the shadow will not fall on the uh, ground. It will be only on the base of the, the uh, Gopuram. And Madhuri Meenakshi temple, the height was so much that it was uh, the Chola kingdom. And nobody knows how that uh, heavy stone was lifted up and there were no engineers. So when we had excellent people in India doing great things, why can't we do now? And that's what is my drive. So today's session has been one that teaches us about confidence, passion and drive. Thank you so much for spending some time with our students, sir. On behalf of all the members, thank you.